uh, well, uh, let's proceed directly to the next presenter. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we, we lack of time. So, the next presenter is uh, Dr. Edwin Calido. He has uh, lots of uh, experiences in industry. Uh, he graduated uh, uh, in University of the Philippines, Los Banos, as an agricultural engineering and got his master's and PhD in Asian Institute of Technology, Bangkok. He, experienced, he was the technical director of the Elixir Industrial Equipment, and he's also the engineering manager of the Hayama Industrial Corporations. And currently, he's the president and CEO of the Neuronmic uh, Incorporated. And this is a, highly, uh, a company dealing with highly intelligent systems and automated systems which is now uh, granted by the Department of uh, uh, Science and Technology to develop the uh, ventilator to address the COVID problem. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm proud to present to you Dr. Edwin Calido. Edwin? You have no sound, Edwin. Uh, please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me now? Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Where's my screen now? I can see your presentation on the screen already. On the screen already, okay. So, let me start. Okay, this morning I'm going to present uh, a work that uh, we have done, done by my former students at De La Salle. Uh, it is on the development of a semi-autonomous landing robot for precision nitrogen application and corn. Currently, we, have, we are facing a food security problem. It's a global concern. And in fact, uh, the UN predicts or that there will be uh, additional 2.2 billion people more by the year 2050, or that's around more than 9 billion people. And to feed this population, we have to increase our food production by at least 70%. However, our land area has already plateaued, so there are no, there's no more land to, um, available land to uh, produce this uh, additional food. Uh, one of the technologies was discussed by Dr. Coelho this morning. This is uh, one current technology that can help us address this problem. Uh, but uh, we are going to present also another way uh, to help in this uh, endeavor. So uh, our um, solution to this problem is to increase the efficiency of our field production using uh, precision agriculture. Precision agriculture makes use of data so that we can apply the resources required for growing our crops efficiently. That means we only apply fertilizer, for example, to the plant that requires it. We only apply pesticide to the particular plants that are infested. Uh, we, one, one of the data sources uh, that we will employ, we employed in this project is uh, vision data. Um, in particular, we used a normalized difference vegetation index. Uh, this was uh, used uh, in the past uh, two or three decades already uh, in remote sensing applications, but it's also applied to agriculture and uh, using uh, near infrared images and processing it, you can actually determine the health of your crop. With this information on the health of your crop, which is a spatial data, 
you can actually create a map. Uh, we call it a recipe map such that we are able to localize and, uh, and also determine the health condition of each plant in the field. In this pro project, we uh, deal with uh, fertilizer application. So um, these are the typical uh, way of uh, applying fertilizers here in the Philippines. So normally it's just broadcasted you know, manually or uh, in mechanized uh, operations, they actually spray it or what we call foliar application of fertilizer. If we look at the efficiency of these ways of uh, fertilizer application, so if we broadcast the fertilizer, most of it, some of it will be absorbed by the plant, of course, and help the plant grow. But most of it are lost to run off. Some go through the soil and some actually go even into the, the water, um, underwater, you know, and pollute and uh, contribute to pollution. So oh, most of the fertilizer is lost. A better way of doing it is what we call banding. That means we apply the fertilizer locally to where it is needed uh, through an injection mechanism. So by this mechanism, we apply the fertilizer exactly where the roots of the plants are and at the exact amount required by the plant. So you avoid the losses and make the operation much, much more efficient. So our main goal in this study is to develop a semi-autonomous ground robot that will serve as the applicator of liquid nitrogen for the unhealthy crops or the crops that are, have been identified as requiring additional fertilizer. It is based on an intelligent position agricultural decision support system. This is our conceptual framework. So we have our the source of data will be a specially, um, it's a vision system. We have an ordinary digital camera that was retrofitted with a blue filter to convert it into a multi-spectral camera. So that is a camera capable of uh, getting near infrared images of the field. Then we have a central control system that will process the data and generate a recipe map. The recipe map is transferred to an unmanned ground vehicle, that is the robot, who uses this data and a localization, uh, an onboard computer for localization to uh, go to the uh, particular crop or plant and apply the fertilizer by injecting it near the plant. So that is our vision system. This is the vision system that we use. This is the camera that was modified. Uh, this is the filter that we use. It's an open source uh, organization uh, that can uh, that produce a filter. And this is the setup. Uh, actually, the, the vision or the getting the images of the field is being done right now using drones. But uh, in our case, uh, to have a more stable system, we just uh, have an elevated camera to cover the plot of land that we use as our experimental field. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is our control system to consists of a PC uh, for processing the data and generating the map. So this is an example of uh, a, a near infrared uh, image. You can see that uh, the uh, vegetation uh, part uh, has, a, has a different color. Over compared with the background. So it identifies the 
the vegetation. And this is also a view of the software that we developed. Okay, so this is uh, the spe uh, multispectral image uh, or NDVI uh, process, processed image. So just an example of the uh, difference between the raw image and the processed image. Okay, so from the processed image, uh, we, do, we put an array of positions this is for the localization. These uh, boxes will represent where the crops are or where the plants are, are growing. And uh, the, based on the NDVI index, it will also determine the amount of fertilizer that will be applied to a particular plant. So this is the actual. And then after completing the process, it will be sent to the robot using this button here. And uh, for this system, uh, we are not able to move the robot autonomously outside the rows. So we have to manually move the robot, uh, place it on the, the first row, for example. And then within the rows, the robot will automatically navigate by itself. Okay, so this is our uh, robot applicator. So we have onboard localization, this is the actual robot. So our localization is based on a compass, electronic compass and this encoder wheel, or a ground wheel with an encoder. This is the ground wheel. And then for the application of the fert uh, fertilizer liquid nitrogen, we use a peristaltic pump and this injection mechanism. So this mechanism, this pump mechanism will push the syringe with uh, fertilizer in it to the ground or into the ground. So these are the electronic part. So this is just a black diagram on, of our uh, robot applicator system. So we are using several uh, microcontrollers for this. And this is the main uh, program. Okay, now I will show you a video about the robot working. So it's uh, already injecting the fertilizer, then it will move to the next plant. it will compensate on the direction and then move to the next plant. Okay, so we have done some testing uh, determining the depth. So the uh, average depth that we are injecting the fertilizer is about 21 uh, millimeters, 22 millimeters. Uh, the rate, we also check uh, how much of fertilizer calibrated the peristaltic pump. Uh, this is the rate, banding rate. Uh, so we have an accuracy of uh, and reliability of 99%. So very little error. So the peristaltic pump is quite accurate in dispensing the required amount of fertilizer. Uh, we tested uh, the capability of the robot in terms of negotiating inclines. So the maximum incline is around 13 degrees. And the way the robot is, I mean, the field is expected to be normally level. Then we also tested the distribution of the liquid distribution underground or fertilizer. And uh, 
we get uh, uh, from our expected, we get 98% uh, within the expected uh, uh, region or area. And then we do some continuous running, so about an hour without any problems. Uh, this is the onboard uh, uh, localization. So we use the ground wheel for the linear tracking of the distance or the position of the robot. And then we have a compass to correct its bearing, you know, so to keep it in a straight line. So you can see the robot is self compensating. Uh, the problem with this is that uh, it is a three wheel robot, so it's not really stable uh, in terms of bearing. So we have to compensate every time. Uh, this is the, yeah, the localization accuracy. Uh, in terms of work rate, uh, since this is just a prototype and scale model, um, we require at least uh, uh, what is this? Uh, for 15 uh, square meters of area covered, we require uh, 425 uh, seconds. So it's quite slow at the moment. Uh, I estimate that uh, for a hectare, to cover a hectare of land, it will take a couple of days to complete. So, um, this kind of system, actually, you need to use the swarm concept. That means that you will uh, have several robots doing this operation in order to be practical in terms of the work rate. So this is the average uh, work rate for uh, 15 square meters. This is in terms of seconds. OK, in conclusion, uh, this project we have uh, developed a successful proof of concept for a semi-autonomous uh, fertilizer banding robot for intelligent uh, nitrogen application. So we are able to capture near infrared images, uh, uh, pro uh, process this image, and generate a recipe map uh, to identify the, the corn plants that uh, require uh, fertilization and at what level of fertilization and we have uh, successfully demonstrated in, a, in the actual field. So that concludes my presentation this morning. Thank you very much for the opportunity and thank you for the organizers for this uh, opportunity. Okay, thank you very much uh, uh, Dr. Edwin uh, for that very informative and uh, interesting presentation.